Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar Mainstreaming Tismo Through Policies and Processes. My name is Nilu Parvinashtiani, and I'll be helping with facilitating today's webinar. This webinar is sponsored by the Federal Highway Administration and hosted by the National Operations Center of Excellence, also known as NOCO. Um, so if you don't know us already, uh, we at NOCO offer resources to support the transportation system management and operations community. On your screen right now, on the bottom right side, you see a NOCO useful links uh, where you can browse through different links to access our resources, um, case studies, previous webinars, and news. Um, a few other logistics uh, I wanted to share with you was that uh, we are recording this webinar and that recording along with the, a PDF of the presentations will be available through the on-demand learning section of the NOCO website. Also, they are uh, accessible now through the download pod that you see on the screen. And this download pod will be displayed now during the intro and uh, again at the end during the Q&A session. All the attendee phones are on listen-only mode by default, but we'd like you to stay engaged by the question discussion pod that we have below the speaker uh, photos that you see on the screen. Uh, we have dedicated time at the end of the webinar to cover all the questions and have a discussion uh, section uh, through the end. So please just as those questions come to your mind during each presentation, uh, put them in the question discussion pod and we'll make sure to cover them at the end uh, and pose them uh, one at a time to our speakers. Um, so that is all I had with the logistics and with that I'll hand it over to our moderator Jacqueline Bauer to start us off. Jacqueline. Good morning or good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this webinar on mainstreaming TISMO through policies and processes. We're excited to have you here. My name is Jocelyn Bauer, and I'll be the moderator for our webinar today. I'm a program manager for LIDOS, and I support the Federal Highway Administration as a project manager for the mainstreaming TISMO project that serves as the basis for this webinar. Our opening presentation on policies and processes that support mainstreaming TISMO will be given by Tracy Scribba and Pat Noyes. Tracy Scribba is the team leader for the organizing and planning for operations team in the Office of Operations at the Federal Highway Administration. She leads efforts to advance and mainstream TISMO through organizational capabilities and culture, professional capacity building, planning and programming, and performance-based system and demand management. Pat Noyes of Pat Noyes & Associates has 40 years of experience in transportation planning and operations and is the principal investigator for this project. She was a lead author of FHWA's Developing and Sustaining a TISMO Mission for Your Organization, a primer for program planning, and is working with the USDOT, NOCO, and IT on a variety of TISMO-related projects. All right, well, with that, um, Tracy, would you like to start? And, and I think we may need to bring up the slot. There we go. Well, as they're loading, I'll say uh, thank you to Jocelyn and uh, Nilu for the introductions. And welcome to everyone. We're uh, glad to have you here joining us for this webinar as we share about a variety of policies and processes that support mainstreaming TISMO. And uh, I'll explain a little bit further about uh, what we mean by mainstreaming TISMO as I provide a bit of an introduction uh, during the, this uh, initial segment of the webinar. Uh, so first, this is uh, our purpose for having this webinar today. Uh, the first, I'll, I'll describe the uh, Federal Highway Administration project that I led on mainstreaming TISMO, and also a little bit about what we mean by mainstreaming TISMO. And then I'll explain uh, why policies and processes are an important part of that. Uh, we're going to highlight a few common areas where policies and processes can uh, help mainstream TISMO. And uh, Pat's going to take over at that point and then describe uh, also some examples of that. Uh, and then we'll have some examples, uh, real-life examples, from uh, several of our speakers today from their state DOTs and how they have done that. Uh, and then we look forward to answering your questions. So hopefully uh, we'll uh, uh, get a good bit of questions in the chat pod as we go along here. Um, so you can see the agenda a little more specifically here. We do have a great set of speakers. 
uh, that are going to highlight their practices from their state DOTs, both the things they're doing in TISMO, but uh, highlighting how they have helped mainstream TISMO in their respective agencies. Um, so first of all, I realize most of you probably do know what is TISMO, uh, but just, uh, uh, just in case, to provide a little bit of common understanding here as we get started. Um, so TISMO, this is a federal definition from legislation, um, and it really is a key items there are underlined. It's an integrated set of strategies, not just one strategy for managing and operating the system. Um, it, it helps optimize the performance of, of infrastructure uh, that we have already and we've built and invested in. Um, and to do that, it's helping to preserve that capacity, make it available to users, uh, and in, in the process, improve um, the safety and reliability and efficiency and security of the system. Um, so, and, and, and of course, by um, doing uh, more effectively using what we already have, we certainly hope to uh, minimize the environmental impact in the process. So operations is really a comprehensive look at getting the most out of what we uh, facilities we have. Now, to turn to mainstreaming TISMO, what, what we mean by mainstreaming TISMO, this is the, the kind of uh, definition we came down to uh, in the course of this project over the last few years, um, that TISMO and its strategies are readily understood, valued, and available to people across the agency, and as well as with their partners. Uh, regardless of what their role is in the organization. Uh, we've realized uh, over the years in looking at uh, transportation systems management and operations that it has touch points with all different aspects of an agency, uh, to, from the planning of projects to uh, design decisions that are made, uh, how a project is constructed and how uh, traffic is managed during the project. Uh, those are just a few examples. Um, how are human resources? Uh, area looks to, to staff the area. So operations really has touch points all along the way, and in order to effectively implement it, um, it needs to be considered throughout the process and not just as an afterthought once uh, facilities are, are open and ribbons are cut and things like that. So uh, we really look, think that the mainstream of TISMO or one another way to think of it is integrating TISMO into uh, uh, all the aspects of the agency is, is an important way to uh, be more effective. So you can see here uh, benefits of mainstreaming TISMO. These are just a few. Uh, we do think it provides a broader range of strategies to uh, help address needs and issues um, that are happening in transportation. Um, another benefit uh, to mainstreaming TISMO is you get staff across all the disciplines, as I just mentioned, uh, can work together more effectively and efficiently and better deliver on, on transportation uh, projects and strategies to uh, provide good service for the customer. Uh, and then uh, speaking of the customer, the system users really get a safer, more reliable trip, and uh, the expenditures that we make are more effectively used. So to talk specifically about the project here, um, the objective was really to look at how our agencies mainstreaming TISMO, what might be important to mainstreaming TISMO, uh, and and how um, you know what are some some ways that that can be shared to help other agencies do that. Um, so we did develop a national uh, expert panel that worked with us on this project, and and the folks uh, speaking today uh, were were part of that panel. Uh, we did some interviews uh, with, with various champions of TISMO to try and get some different perspectives and find out what, uh, how they have been doing mainstreaming. And we did uh, a virtual workshop with a lot of interaction to get uh, also some additional ideas. And then, of course, with many projects, you do review literature to see what has been said. Um, you can see we have a number of uh, products there that, that have, been, um, are, have been or are in the process of being produced, quite a range here, uh, and, in, and also some infographics that are part of that. So we'll be uh, rolling these out uh, over the next while, uh, probably the next six months or so for many of them, um, and uh, looking to then wrap up the project. So I, I mentioned a number of these products here, and we do plan to post them all on uh, this Federal Highway webpage I mentioned here and also uh, share them through the National Operations Center of Excellence. And to give you one example 
Uh, this is an uh, infographic that we, we just um, um, finished uh, through our review processes and will be in the pro uh, getting posted in the near future. Uh, this is an infographic we did to show what are examples of how TISMO can be integrated or mainstreamed across a transportation agency. So uh, we used a, a, a building uh, as a, a launch point for this infographic. Uh, so, you know, if you have ex executive leadership, what are some of the things they could do? Uh, you know, and you could work with them as a TISMO uh, professional to, to better integrate TISMO and get it um, shared at the executive level. And you can see we touched on a number of other areas in, in this infographic. Um, and then this is all very um, readable in the full-size form. Uh, so if you're looking at full screen, you could probably uh, see it uh, and be able to look at it. But I blew up a few of these just to give you an idea of, of some of the kinds of things we had in there. And these are just ideas or examples. They're not a formula. So I do want to put that caution out there. There is no formula for doing this in, in a given agency. But you can see there are ways that executive leadership can support the effort, um, and there are ways that uh, you can work with people in the, involved in planning and programming and work together to uh, uh, integrate operations and, and better deliver TISMO. So uh, move on from there, our project focus areas. I will tell you policies and processes was one of four that we looked at. Uh, we also looked at agency culture, uh, decision making and information management systems, and the role of building a business case for TISMO and how that can help uh, advance the mainstream uh, TISMO in an agency. Um, and then lastly, I'll touch on uh, just as an introduction to, to uh, Pat's uh, se section of this presentation. Um, there are various ways we saw that policies and processes can support mainstreaming. Um, so one of the main reasons for having policies and processes in any situation uh, is to formalize and guide how business is carried out. Um, so in this case, the implementation of TISMO strategies, which starts at planning and goes all the way through the, the process. Um, we also um, think that integrating TISMO across the functional areas of the state DOT is a benefit, as I mentioned uh, in this presentation, and mainstreaming supports that. Um, you, there are often um, many TISMO strategies that can serve as alternatives to other maybe more uh, costly or, or um, intensive strategies that might take longer to implement. So TISMO can complement those strategies. It can solve some near-term problems while you're waiting on some of those strategies. Or sometimes it may even be the solution entirely to a, a given operational issue. So uh, by integrating and ma mainstreaming that more, it gets better consideration uh, across all the disciplines. And then, of course, some more consistent application. So with that, I will pass it off to Pat to uh, go through a few of these specifics across these areas. Thank you, Tracy. Um, as Tracy mentioned, we did quite a bit of research in terms of documents and interviews with agencies across the U.S. and came up with a variety of practices that people were, were using to mainstream TISMO through their policies and processes. The ones we're going to talk about here are really the six main or the most common areas that we found in our work to, to um, integrate or mainstream TISMO through policies and processes. So the six that are, are mentioned here are integrating TISMO into business practices, incorporate TISMO formally into planning and project development, include TISMO in agency manuals and guidance documents, develop TISMO committees, develop organizational structures um, and staff positions that uh, support TISMO, and then finally integrating TISMO into agency-wide performance management. So those are, those are the most common ones. We heard of other ones. We also identified a few areas where we thought uh, additional work could be done in terms of mainstreaming through policies and processes. So just to go through the, these six uh, briefly before we look at some specific examples from the DOTs. In terms of business practices, business practices is a pretty broad term, and, and the way we were looking at it was anywhere we could really change the way we do business to make TISMO a more common um, component of how we do that. So business practices include things like project identification and selection, 
um, contracting and procurement, data management, partnerships, those kinds of things. So they are really a variety of um, how we look at the day-to-day -day business of the organization and some of the formal processes and policies that we use to, to direct and guide how we make decisions and how we do our work. So um, going a little bit more into the specifics of, oops, oh, sorry, planning and, um, so it, going next to planning and project development, um, what we really found there was that there were a variety of processes that DOTs were using to help support them in identifying the needs of the organization in terms of the system, the system needs, and then identifying um, how TISMO can be used to meet those needs as part of project development, project planning. Um, so, in, for example, a number of states looked at what can we do operationally, what can we do um, with TISMO strategies prior to looking at actual capacity additions or construction. So it's really a matter of um, how we can take TISMO and TISMO strategies and incorporate it into the planning and project development decision processes um, and looking at how funding is allocated to uh, various projects and improvements. So it's a, it's a cost-effective alternative uh, that, that uh, a number of DOTs have formalized in their processes um, for project development and planning. Um, some of the specific examples um, looking at planning um, include how can um, system performance be improved, uh, it, it, looking at, um, at how we can create a more operational perspective or an operations-oriented performance metrics that really help to identify how we can improve the operations on the system um, and then looking specifically at a range of TISMO strategies to help uh, address that. Uh, one of the things that um, that is being used fairly commonly across the U.S. is the sharing of operations data with planners so that they can help make decisions about really what are good solutions, what are good um, alternatives to solving problems on the system based on existing operations data. And then finally, um, a number of DOTs have been looking at how they can integrate um, TISMO into their long-range transportation planning and investment programming and I think we'll hear a little bit about that from uh, a couple of our speakers today. Uh, looking now at, um, at more of the project development side of planning and development, um, planning and project development, uh, one of the things that, uh, that folks are using is um, a review checklist. Uh, Colorado DOT developed one of these several years ago. I think this is becoming a more common approach to what can we look at, what, what's a checklist of, of TISMO considerations or operational considerations that we can look at prior to um, committing to a larger uh, capacity or, or construction project. Again, operations data, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> operations data uh, being shared to support project development and prioritization. Um, leveraging TISMO to support performance-based practical designer solutions. Uh, Washington State DOT has done quite a bit with their performance-based and practical solutions um, projects and project development as an example. And then ITS architecture uh, using um, is used to in include technology for TISMO uh, strategies in projects. So one of the things that we really want to do is have uh, project development and project design looking at how can we incorporate TISMO and TISMO strategies and the infrastructure needed to support those uh, in the design and development process. In terms of manuals and guidance, um, you, you'll hear some of this from uh, Pennsylvania DOT. They're doing quite a bit of work in this, and, 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 and as is Florida, and that's really looking at how can we take TISMO-focused actions and integrate them into existing documents, existing manuals and guidance um, and formalized processes so that TISMO gets considered in all of the formal processes 
um, in a very formal and directed way throughout. So it's a matter of as, as documents are rewritten or updated or um, changed to specifically to incorporate TISMO, making sure that TISMO considerations um, are included in that. And then um, TISMO committees, those are extremely common. These take a variety of forms. Um, and they're used to help coordinate TISMO efforts across functions and divisions. This is really an important uh, step in helping to, as Tracy defined, mainstreaming, making everyone aware of it and comfortable with it, and um, being able to share perspectives. So these could be permanent. They can be temporary. Some have been used simply to develop a, a program plan, um, and some of them are ongoing, and they help to coordinate across not only divisions within the DOT, but across partner agencies as well. And then organizational structure and staffing, um, an, a lot has been done um, in terms of how DOTs are organized and structured um, and the development or, or establishment of specific TISMO positions to help formalize and advance um, TISMO within the organization. Um, I think you'll hear some of that um, from Arizona as the one DOT that actually has a, a TISMO division. So we'll, we'll hope to hear a little bit more from Brent on that one. And then um, performance management is um, the last area that we found was fairly commonly used. And that is, is takes a number of forms in terms of performance management at the TISMO level, but also performance management at the, at, the, at the agency level, at the enterprise level, that incorporates uh, TISMO and operational measures to help them um, really advance TISMO and TISMO strategies as a viable alternative to uh, some of our more traditional design build uh, solutions. So uh, some of the steps to consider in terms of mainstreaming TISMO and policies um, are out outlined here. Um, I mentioned reviewing current and policies and processes and looking to see how you can integrate and, and enhance TISMO aspects of that, including TISMO measures in your dashboards and in project analysis, project development, creating TISMO plans and uh, more formal programs with, with um, business processes included in those, establish a TISMO steering committee for coordination either uh, temporary or ongoing, meeting with managers in other divisions, uh, making the business case uh, to your other divisions and, and peers across the organization, and then creating TISMO staff positions. So those are really the, the main themes that we heard as we went through the work that we were doing. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Jocelyn, who will introduce <coughs> our state speakers um, to give you some more specific examples of each of all right, thank you, Pat. Our first state agency speaker is Brent Kane, who will provide the Arizona perspective on mainstream TISMO. Brent serves as the assistant director for the Arizona DOT TISMO division. He leads the TISMO efforts at ADOT and also oversees innovative efforts and new technologies to further enhance transportation system operations and safety. He has over 30 years of experience in transportation planning, engineering, and operations. Brent, please take it away. Very good. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, all. Thank you, Jocelyn. And uh, again, my name is Brent Kane. I'm the division director here at the Arizona Department of Transportation. I oversee the TISMO efforts uh, for the DOT. I want to give you a, a real brief background on, on where we've been and kind of and then focus in and hone in on <clears throat> really the performance management of what we're doing, not really get down to the specific project level uh, and efforts that we've done, because uh, there is limited time. But just to, just to let everybody know, we actually, uh, this, this initiated with uh, Federal Highways uh, back in uh, early uh, 2010s, um, essentially developing a capability maturity model and, and really looking at operations and focusing in the operations uh, side of the house, um, looking at the back end. And uh, Federal Highway had reached out to us, really kind of uh, explaining what TISMO was um, at the time and not knowing um, TISMO is a, a common language now, but back then it was not. And uh, the state engineer here at Arizona, as well as our director and current director, John Halikowski, was uh, very supportive 
of the uh, TISMO efforts and saw the, had that foresight and vision to see the importance of uh, incorporating uh, and utilizing and implementing uh, TISMO within the agency. So back in, uh, I guess like in, in 15, uh, we actually, uh, I was actually date, uh, deputy state engineer over urban operations, so I saw everything within the Phoenix and Tucson regions uh, from construction, maintenance, uh, operations, the traffic management center. And I was uh, appointed to essentially stand up a division uh, at Arizona DOT. And it's a little bit different. There's bureaus, there's divisions, but just to give you a frame of context for, for ADOT, uh, there, there prior to this division being launched, there's five divisions, and it's like MBD or DMB uh, that you're familiar with, uh, enforcement, enforcement compliant division, the planning division. So again, the importance it was leveled or, or, or set to was at a executive leadership level, and uh, it wasn't at a additional FTEs or bodies, but essentially restructuring uh, the agency and a lot of it on the IT uh, D uh, side of the house. And again, pulling out the, the operations focus, and we're about 300 FTEs. And it all started uh, working with Federal Highways. We did a capability maturity model, two of them actually back in 14, March of 14, and also in 2017. And I uh, had a planning workshop in 2017. And, and uh, other efforts are, of course, what uh, Tracy described uh, today or this morning uh, or this afternoon on the mainstream of TISMO. Uh, my apologies on the dates there. It's, it's spanned over three to four years. And kind of the efforts that we focus here on, uh, of course, in launching new new, new division and, and uh, really pushing the, the TISMO effort is one of the first things is to develop that strategic plan, which we launched in, in February 2017. I do want to say that we're actually, we just initiated an ITS master plan. Uh, we're just in the initial throes of that. That really helps us guide, and it's a short-term master plan, not a long-term, but uh, really I, I envision this to be three years out. It's going to be dynamic. It's really going to help us prioritize where we invest our infrastructure, where we invest our resources uh, with TISMO. Um, and then uh, with that, it's going to be, again, a three, three-year. It will have design, construct, um, but very short-term and very proactive, as we all know how technology can change. And then the other thing that's just recently created here at ADOT was the Smart Highway Technology Subprogram. Sub uh, that's a new subprogram that's a funding source that's going to feed into the, this ITS master plan, looking at initially having about $5 million per year uh, that will help drive whatever innovation, whatever efforts um, that we can actually uh, design and incorporate. Uh, so pretty excited about that. So just gives you a high level, just a context of what the division looks like. I'm not going to go through this, but just kind of uh, it illustrates the level of efforts that are within the division as far as operations. Uh, we, we have the Traffic Operations Center, uh, the Emergency Management and Weather Management is housed within the division. Uh, we do all the statewide signing and striping. Um, our regional uh, traffic engineering is actually housed in the, uh, the TISMO division. Uh, where our HSIP funds, our HSIP efforts, our safety, traffic safety and data is within uh, a particular group. And uh, we also manage all of the, uh, the operations and maintenance of our signals and all ITS uh, maintenance um, operations and communications as well, too. We also are responsible for all, for all the, the lighting uh, across the entire state and also emerging technologies such as connected vehicle, uh, autonomous, autonomous vehicle, and other new technologies. And this is broken into seven different groups. So I, I want to kind of hone in on my presentation on the more of the performance management side. And I want to share that it really, it really starts at the top down, or it really starts at the top, and that's at the governor's office level. Our governor is very proactive and very uh, appreciative in looking at new technologies and supporting the economic development in our state. He had developed and continued to develop a, uh, a strategic plan that's cascaded down uh, to the cabinet level, uh, which is shown on the left. Uh, the DOT, Arizona DOT, actually has a two-pager from the governor what that strategic plan looks like, very high level. And then from uh, the DOT's perspective, ADOT's perspective, we actually have a strategic strategic plan, a three-year plan, what we call the X matrix, 
It's just a simple one pager, but it really identify lays out our initiatives uh, for every single uh, fiscal year. And that's further cascaded down um, to the division level. But as part of that, there's also performance measures that go along with it. And the governor has his scorecard of what the measures are. And just not reporting what the measures are, is what we, we identify targets for those measures. And again, with the simple green, yellow, red, we identify where they're at, if they're meeting target, and if they're not, why. And it's not really to beat on people why they're red or why they're yellow, but really to an understanding that we need to focus attention there. So we really try to embrace the red and that's cascaded down to all the cabinets. So this is actually a, a snapshot of the Batismo Division uh, for Arizona DOT, the strategic plan. It's active. I know you can't read this, but it's really just to give you a context that what we measure gets done. And we, we lay out the plan every year and we go through it on a monthly basis. And each of the groups, we identify the strategic areas that we want to focus on, we identify the action, we identify the metrics, and what we're going to do with the countermeasures to address those. And then we actually measure those as well, too, and discuss them. Um, we just wrapped up our last business review. It doesn't show October, but we did discuss in September where we're at. And again, we look at the, the colors of red and yellow um, and, and look at why we're not getting there and ways to, to move that needle to get them moving in the right direction. Also, each seven groups have their own metrics as well, as well that cascade up to the division, and the division cascades up to the director, and the director cascades up to the governor's office. So it all cascades up and down, and the, the various groups, the seven groups, have their own measures, and it gets a little bit more specific on what they're, they're doing as well, too. And, uh, again, we talk about these on a monthly basis of where they're at, uh, whether they're meeting target, and what we're trying to do to, to uh, remedy those. Uh, these are something that they develop their own scorecard, their own metrics, and their own targets, uh, and we discuss them jointly. But, again, they're cascaded down from the division strategic plan. Then, lastly, I just want to share um, – a lot of support from Federal Highways um, and just where we're at moving forward. Uh, the Regional Operations Leadership Forum that Federal Highways had launched is uh, AASHTO is essentially moving that The host forward. has left uh, the meeting to speak with meeting support and will rejoin soon. And we're also doing um, uh, a new uh, a TRB for NCHRP, um, a Transportation Operations Manual, which is comparable to the Green Book or the Highway Capacity Manual or the Highway Safety Manual. And it's really focused around TISMO. Uh, the NCHRP efforts wrapped up, and that's moving into AASHTO to basically uh, manage and maintain. And uh, we're looking at uh, having that rolled out uh, next year, early next year, as part of a TSP or Technical Service Program, uh, similar to what NOCO is. And NOCO would be actually a part of that, that three-pillar of these, these elements, the Regional Operations Forum, uh, the TOM, the Transportation Operations Manual, and then the Warehouse, the National Operations Center of Excellence. And, of course, NOCO is an excellent resource as well as Federal Highway on the TISMO effort. So with that, I'll turn it back to the facilitator, Jocelyn. All right. Thank you, Brent. Our next speaker is Tim Simedinas. He is the state TISMO engineer at the Traffic Operations Bureau in the, or at the Iowa DOT. He has been at the Iowa DOT for the past 24 years, starting in traffic safety and then moving to ITS before his current position. Tim attended Iowa State University. All right, Tim, please take it away. Thank you, Jocelyn. And good afternoon and good morning, as your case may be. Uh, thank you to NOCO for inviting Iowa to participate today. My role at the Iowa DOT is State TISMO Engineer or the State Traffic Operations Engineer or the Assistant Director of Traffic Operations Bureau, I guess, depending on who I'm trying to impress or confuse. Uh, like Arizona, Iowa got a pretty early start on TISMO or TSMNO, uh, thanks to John Corbin, who was one of the first directors of what is now our Traffic Operations Bureau at the Iowa DOT. He charted our TISMO course and designed our TISMO ship, which was then built and pushed to sea by Scott Marler in the form of our original program and strategic plans, and even many of our service layer plans. 
Scott has since gone on to become our DOT director and is now also the chair of the AASHTO Committee on Transportation System Operations, or CTSO. As far as my TISMO ship metaphor, it kind of fails at this point because TISMO is definitely not just a single ship. It takes dozens of ships and hundreds of sailors in all parts of our transportation globe to integrate TISMO into everything that we do. However, I will say that it's very helpful to have Director Marler's appreciation for TISMO coming from the top of our organization. At the beginning of 2021, Director Marler and his Iowa DOT executive leadership team released a department-wide business plan. You can see that nearly every one of the five priority goals from that plan has some relation to TISMO. Uh, this is also great timing because we're currently wrapping up our 2021 update to our Iowa DOT TISMO plan, and this update is identifying many of our next steps for TISMO in Iowa, and our recommendations are received better when they align with the DOT's business plan goals. Uh, all that said, I had to share this slide that I found from an old Iowa DOT TISMO presentation that was given in the past by someone else from the Iowa DOT. Uh, this would have been presented around the time that we were making the transition from our TISMO strategic and program plans to actually implementing some of the various service layer recommendations. In my experience, I think this is especially true with a subject like TISMO that's so broad and so ambiguous that it's really hard to have a meaningful discussion until you get down into the specifics. So speaking of specifics, one of the smartest steps I think we did in Iowa before I was actually involved was to task our highest level TISMO steering committee to create and follow TISMO annual accomplishment plans. These plans continue to provide us with actionable tasks that can be completed within each fiscal year. Each task includes a lead and supporting bureaus to make sure things get done. Now, regarding funding, there has been discussions about setting up some dedicated funding for TISMO in Iowa, and that could still happen, but I actually like that instead of creating more bureaucracy and new systems, we're instead focusing on integrating TISMO and mainstreaming TISMO into the existing programs and processes. In some cases, enhancing those programs and processes to better recognize the value of various TISMO projects. Uh, you can see that, like TISMO, these tasks are all over the board. Some require funding, others are internal initiatives. Many of these may have happened on their own, even if the TISMO acronym was never even created. But having this, the support of our TISMO steering committee definitely helps make these things happen. One way we've brought attention to operational needs and opportunities is by taking our existing infrastructure condition evaluation screening tool and modifying it to create an operations-focused version. Here you can see the criteria that we use for the scoring. One feature I really like about this is that we also have all the underlying data available. So if we want to run a specific analysis that focuses on a certain type of problem, we can do that too. Here we see the color-coded scores assigned to all the primary highways in Iowa. And then we can further break down those scores. We see segments with scores that are one or two standard deviations worse than the mean. So these are the segments that particularly lend themselves to being considered for TISMO treatments. In this case, our ISOP screen tool is a resource we have available, but we're still working on integrating into some existing project selection and project prioritization tools. Our Traffic Critical Projects Program and our efforts in area work zones has been one of our best examples of how we've improved system maintenance and operations in Iowa. Uh, many of our efforts in this area have been documented at the links shown on this slide, but the real key was that we already had good DOT staff in construction and traffic and safety and maintenance and design and traffic operations in the districts who had experience and knew their own areas very well when it came to work zones. TISMO helped emphasize the importance of work zones and brought all these bureaus together to collaborate on a very broad and comprehensive list of initiatives. Now, this started back in 2014 as a request from management to see what you can do to use ITS to address some of these backups we're having in work zones. And from that time, it's grown and been embraced as a TISMO effort with broad support all across the department. 
This has enabled and empowered all of our DOT staff who deal with work zones every day to collaborate on so many of these in initiatives seen here. And what is really neat is that the DOT staff that's most involved with these work zone related efforts don't feel like they were handed a mandate from upper management. And in fact, I think if you asked any one of them about work zones in Iowa, they'd be more focused on the next six or so planned work zone initiatives that we're working on rather than thinking about the things we've already accomplished. And that sense of ownership is what makes uh, this something that's not going to easily disappear after a critical retirement or a change in executive leadership. Here we see a good example uh, for Iowa of what gets measured gets done. We started collecting roadway clearance data on the police report forms back in 2018, but the, initially there was so much variability in the quality of the data collection that it was basically unusable. But by creating this data collection, it added emphasis to the metric, brought attention to both improving the data quality, and more importantly, reducing those clearance times. Uh, this also highlights the, the value of this analytics tool in this case, uh, Intrans at Iowa State University built this web-based tool that allows us to filter on date ranges and, and uh, other metrics as well, like maps and counties and cities. Uh, but in this case, we could remove 2018 to kind of get rid of that early data. And then we can see some general decreasing trend in recent years, as well as a few months with outliers. Uh, I should also mention that we're collecting and providing similar analytics on secondary crash data in Iowa. Uh, another recent example, <clears throat> area of emphasis in Iowa has been working more directly with our district staff who are most closely related to traffic operations. Again, this covers a wide variety of topics. Uh, the key with this group has been providing a two-way communication resource, not just between the central office and the districts, but also among our six districts. And within this group, uh, a growing emphasis is being placed on daily monitoring of major crashes and incidents, and to make sure that uh, district TISMO engineers can be a focal point to coordinate any mitigation efforts. I know in the past we've had high profile incidents where so many well-intentioned DOT staff uh, want to get involved and provide input and assistance that the mitigation efforts can quickly become disjointed. We want to take advantage of our district TISMO engineers, uh, most of which are just new in the last year or two, uh, to that position anyway. They have DOT experience. But let them be our unifying resource to uh, addressing incidents. Last topic I want to cover uh, is our Des Moines Integrated Corridor Management Effort, or ICM. This has been a, a very comprehensive approach to the entire Des Moines uh, tra transportation system. It really started from the realization that we simply can't afford to add more lanes to our urban freeways. Here we see the significant financial savings offered by TISMO and ICM strategies. This compares the relative costs of more traditional infrastructure and widening projects of the left two with an alternative, alternative ICM-focused approach, that third option, using TISMO-type solutions. And even with this, you can see in the gray shaded box there that almost half of the ICM bundle still in, is going toward infrastructure. So it's, just, it's, hard, it's hard to, you'll never completely get away from that, but it just shows a, the relative cost of ICM or TISMO versus infrastructure. Uh, this shows our currently recommended ICM implementation plan for the Des Moines metro area. Uh, Projects include early wind projects such as enhanced mile marker, uh, mile marker style ramp signs at the two system interchanges to help with incident location and response, a queue spillback mitigation at select signalized ramp terminals, an automated median barrier gate to allow emergency access through the median for incident response, a pilot cross-jurisdictional traffic signal optimization project which we hope to repeat on other corridors. And this is special to Iowa because in Iowa, we don't maintain our signals. We let the cities do that for us. Uh, other future projects still under development include ramp metering, which would be the first in Iowa, dynamic shoulder usage, and enhanced dynamic message signing to support active traffic management and queue warning. Uh, this has really been a groundbreaking effort for Iowa, forcing us to look beyond our typical infrastructure projects to work more closely with the local governments and to really think outside our traditional infrastructure first box. Uh, this is a 
process that we definitely plan to repeat in other metros in Iowa. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tim. Our next presentation will be from Subrat Malapatra and Mohammed Rakib at the Maryland DOT State Highway Administration. Subrat has been with the Maryland DOT State Highway Administration for 16 years and currently serves as the Director of the Asset Management Office. He served as the Deputy Director leading the agency's PISMO program for three years. Prior to that, Subrat held various positions in the Planning Office for 12 years. He has a master's degree in civil engineering from UMD College Park. Mohammed Rakib is the chief of mobility planning and engineering division in the Office of Transportation Mobility and Operations under Maryland DOT State Highway Administration. He possesses over 19 years of experience in planning, engineering, installation, and management of traffic operations and ITS deployment projects. All right, Sabrat, Mohammed, please take it away. Thank you, Jocelyn. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you again for Federal Highway and National Operations Center for giving us this opportunity to talk uh, on this topic. I look at the uh, participants and my fellow presenters, and some of us have been with this PISMO journey for a few years now. So uh, thank you again for giving us these opportunities to have a touch point every few months, every couple of years to see how this journey is coming along. And I think it's Refreshing to see that all of us have made great progress in this uh, journey. Well, some of us, um, in our case, uh, our journey started with a capability maturity model workshop back in 2013-2014. Uh, we were selected one of those LO6 R2 uh, that would probably resonate with many of you guys, uh, where we had a chance to develop a strategic plan uh, for this month. Um, and um, our journey continued. So I'm going to probably spend a little more time on this first slide uh, to just talk about this journey and how far we have come along. Um, uh, and then I will have my colleague uh, Rakib talk about how we have formalized the program with TISMO plan and programming aspects and how we are continuing to mainstream TISMO as part of our organization, not only within M.SHA but with our sister uh, TVUs across MDOT, bringing that multimodal aspect to it, and also working closely with our MPO partner stakeholders because it's all hands on deck. So um, going back to our journey, uh, 2016 is when we rolled our first strategic implementation plan, and we made great progress on, uh, through that plan, and 2018 is when we have updated our SISMO strategic plan. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the strategic plan has positioned us to mainstream TISMO within our organization and across Maryland. So um, we have a TISMO executive directive that I'm going to talk a little more about as how that formalized uh, across the agency. Uh, but uh, if you look at our strategic plan, right from the get-go, we had identified four goal areas. And along all those four goal areas, we had identified objectives and strategies that were looking at the long game, looking at how do we mainstream, whether it's a business process of collaboration within our offices, whether it's a systems and technology implementation, whether it's data analysis and performance management, and at the end goal, the outcome of an enhanced customer experience and engagement. Uh, any goal that you look at, some of those objectives, strategies, and action items, and performance metrics in which we were evaluating our projects had elements of mainstreaming throughout. And we'll give you a few examples how that has played out. Uh, in our case, uh, organization structure, like many programs, it's like all programs, it has three components. You have people, you have processes, and you have technology. So very early on, we had identified, M.SHA leadership, executive leadership had identified that we are not going to create an office of DISMO all by itself. The very early conversations around the CMM workshops identified there is DISMO elements starting from concept to execution. So whether it's concept planning, engineering, construction, operations, maintenance, 
and decommissioning, that whole life cycle, there are TISMO components everywhere. So we should acknowledge that fact and create a culture. Um, so that's where the executive committee, which was co-chaired by our two deputy administrators, staff chief engineers. Um, one chief engineer represented the operations and district side of the house, and the other chief engineer represented the planning and engineering side of the house, if you may. So right from the get-go, and we had senior level representation, leadership representation from key offices, like Office of Planning, Office of Maintenance, Office of Transportation, Mobility and Operations, which was used to be chart in the past, Office of Traffic and Safety, Office of Construction, Office of Policy and Research. So this was an overarching program that touched many offices, and we made sure that our leadership was part of those decisions. We also recognize, I remember our past uh, administrator, Greg Johnson, uh, he used to say if it's everyone's baby, then it's no one's baby. So there was a conscious decision to bring, to have a lead sponsor office, which used to be our Office of Chart, now Office of Transportation, Mobility, and Operations, to identify a dedicated TISMO a deputy director that handled the TISMO program for the agency, not for the office, but for the whole agency. And um, so that was the, that provided that mid-level leadership position provided that that the coverage uh, um, to move the program forward. One of the other things that we did, as opposed to creating silos, we created task forces around various program areas: business processes, technologies, CAVs, trade, work zones. Um, so, depending on the program areas, we had established multidisciplinary task forces with representation from different offices, and these task forces were the implement were, were developed the implementation plan and recommendations, and brought it back to the executive committee. And the executive committee um, provided the strategic guidance, and the implementation plan, once it was adopted, was fulfilled by various offices. So. Um, these were, this is how the program uh, was developed, how it has been managed so far with the task force structure, but with lead uh, support responsibilities on strategies and action items. And since then, there have been some organizational changes uh, in our operations realm where we have started um, integrated PV arterial operations. Our, uh, Rafi is gonna talk a little bit about our statewide operation center upgrades, um, reconfigurations to account for active traffic management strategies. So some of those things happened in that realm. So uh, a little bit about our TISMO directive. We were blessed, we were lucky that our, we didn't have to make a business case to our leadership, it grew organically. But leadership and everyone understood that uh, we we should have a very documented process and a directive and a policy to make sure that it goes beyond the administrators, it goes beyond the champions. So uh, with the recommendation from the business process and policy task force, which again was multidisciplinary, there was a directive uh, uh, recommendation that came through. Uh, our administrator, uh, Tim Smith, um, uh, signed off on it. So that formalized that overall directive for the agency and uh, basically promoting the integration and implementation of a sustainable program, focused to incorporate TISMO as a routine and integrated elements, and developing cross-disciplinary uh, activities and action items. So um, if you look at the directive a little closely, uh, what the directive calls for is provide TISMO implementation guidance and performance-based strategies for planning, engineering, construction, or operations and maintenance. Include TISMO as a routine and integral element of all activities that are that is undertaken by all offices and districts across the board. Um, make sure that we have engagement and buy-in and requirements that um, and standard operating procedures. Uh, where employees, our contractors, our consultants are required to evaluate feasibility of TISMO strategies and solutions for all our projects and activities. Um, there has been some further dialogue um, as how do we 
create standard operating procedures and very specific implementation guidance to um, to advance the directive. So that is some things that we, where we have made some progress. Uh, I'm going to let Rakeem talk about our TISMO plan and programming. And the whole idea here is how we are also looking at our projects, our delivery, and everything to make sure that TISMO is advanced across the agency. Rakeem? <clears throat> Thank you, Subrat. Um, as Subrat was saying that, you know, in our strategic plan, uh, there was a goal area for business process and collaboration. In that goal area, there are two specific objectives. One objective dealt with um, incorporation of TISMO in M.SHA's policies, programs, and standard practices. The other objective specifically said implement and institutionalize a TISMO master plan. That's exactly where the TISMO master plan um, comes into the play. Before I dive deep um, into elaboration of how the TISMO master plan um, is helping us to modernize the organizational processes, um, I'll, I'll take a very, very, very quick moment to kind of describe uh, and elaborate on how we developed the TISMO master plan and what's in it. So in M.SHA, there are some doc the documentation uh, existing plans uh, that facilitated this. Uh, we have the M.SHA Mobility Report, the Strategic Highway Safety Plan, uh, the Strategic Goods and Movement Plan, and the Asset Management Plan. What these documents do is they provide you a very high-level, specific outline of the performance metrics um, for operational needs. Uh, operational needs, in this case, being congestion, reliability, safety, and freight movement. Um, and using those data sets, we created some thematic maps that basically said, here's your network, and these are the areas where you need to improve your operations. Um, we then brought those thematic maps to the subject matter experts. They include your regional planners, operational specialists, uh, district traffic engineers, um, asset managers. Uh, as you can imagine that these competencies and these expertise, they don't exist in any given part of the organization. And going back to Subrat's position, uh, conversation about, earlier conversation about, um, we realized that we're not going to create a separate office for asset management. So we basically collaborated um, with the expertise within the organization, wherever it, um, uh, where it, it, it resided, uh, to come up with the plan. Um, the point here being that, you know, we started the collaboration and the organizational modernization to deliver TISMO at the very early stages of the planning process. Um, so we, we, we identified the corridors to run analysis on those based on traffic data, safety data, uh, and, and we landed on 17 systems throughout the state. Each of the systems could be further um, broken down into subsystems, and then each subsystem can be further broken down into specific strategies. Um, we, we put a lot of emphasis in the scalability and the flexibility of determining projects, simply because um, we realized that we, we were probably never going to have enough funding to deploy the entire systems for, like, systems 1 through 17. So whatever wins we could get, that scalability and flexibility was absolutely critical for us. And as you can see in the tier one strategies where smaller successes, uh, quicker projects that could be deployed into one to three years, tier two being three to five year, and more construction heavy projects uh, where tier three, these are probably your part-time shoulder use, managed lanes, ram metering, and that sort of thing. Uh, in terms of deployment, um, the concept here at MDOT is that our projects are probably going to fall in one of three Bucket. There will be the technology tracks um, where you deploy projects like it, advanced traffic management system application, uh, field ITS deployment. Um, there will be another track for smaller system preservation type projects. These are typically under M.SHA implemented through the districts. And then for the major capital type projects, um, we, we were thinking that these would be, the, we, we still believe that these would probably be a separate track and they will, these are projects that will require detailed planning, engineering design, a lot of procurement effort, NEPA clearances, and that sort of thing. Um, so I'll give some examples of projects that we have been deploying under each of those uh, different uh, scenarios. 
Um, as Subrat was mentioning, the statewide operations center, we just went through a reconfiguration of the statewide operations center in Hanover, Maryland. Um, the statewide operations center was more than 20 years old, and it needed a technology refresh. Um, and um, we also wanted to acknowledge that um, our mandate, our mission has slightly increased. For the longest time, we were uh, controlled access, we focused on controlled access highway traffic and incident management. Um, now we are focused, we are slowly getting into arterial traffic management and so forth. Um, <clears throat> the, um, there's also a project about US-1 corridor. The, the point on these examples here is that these were uh, the project uh, that we um, at Otmo led, but it had a lot of collaboration, contribution, construction management from other offices within the organization. Um, the same is true for uh, some of the major capital projects, um, like the ICM on I-270 and I-695. As many of you know, I-695 Tisma project is one of our flagship projects where we are putting in hard shoulder running on 20, uh, approximately 20 miles of um, shoulder um, on the northwest quadrant of the Baltimore Beltway. Uh, these projects are, even though um, they are Osmo projects, SISMO projects, they are being led uh, by Office of Highway Development. Within M.SHA, the competency of building major capital projects and delivering major capital projects reside within that office. We acknowledge it when we take leverage of that. Um, and obviously, we haven't forgotten the role of communication and uh, coordination, both internal and external. Um, this, we do that as part of uh, the, our TISMO Executive Committee, as Subhat was mentioning, there is a separate uh, task force for TISMO training and education. And obviously, we take all the opportunity within the, within the state and nationally um, to co collaborate and spread the message here. Um, many thanks to NOCO for giving us the opportunity here. And just and another quick thing is, uh, you know, we've taken an opportunity, we've found an opportunity with the federal grant um, for regional operations forum to take the discussion to the SHA district. Uh, we plan on holding uh, in a forum uh, to talk to the construction, traffic, and operations folks at the district level. Uh, those are supposed to be done in spring of next year. With that, I'll hand it back over to Subrat for the next slide. So uh, the wrap-up slide here is, uh, again, we are finding synergies between asset management program and TISMO programs, which, again, have a lot of common elements, maximizing our infrastructure with life cycle approaches. We are leveraging, looking at all other program areas, whether it's context-driven programs and strategies, our CTP allocation for state of good repair projects, and building those enterprise systems, whether it's a service warehouse, enterprise asset management system, risk and resiliency plans, and creating that framework and that uh, ecosystem, if you may, where this more doesn't, even if it's connecting the dots, now it's connecting other dots which are creating that system of systems. With that, appreciate everyone's time and this opportunity to present. Back to you, Jocelyn. All right, thank you. So our final speaker is Doug Tomlinson, the Chief of the Highway Safety and Traffic Operations Division at Pennsylvania DOT. Doug began working for PennDOT in 1994, and his career is focused on a wide range of traffic engineering and traffic operations topics. Doug has a bachelor's in science um, in civil engineering technology from the University of Pittsburgh. All right, Doug, please take it away. All right, thanks, Jocelyn. <clears throat> so today's conversation here, I want to focus on a variety of TISMO planning and performance metrics activities we've done here in Pennsylvania. And the activities we do all focus on our, our TISMO regions that we have set up. These are the regions that we use for our regional traffic management centers, they're also the regions we use for TISMO planning. So the efforts within these regions, we, we want the regions to work with work together. Uh, as you can see, they're crossed in several engineering districts. We try to focus everything to make these groups continue to work together on whatever different aspects that we do when it comes to TISMO. So we started, like many states, with the capability maturity model to get a look at where we stand as a state and from there, we developed a strategic framework and program plan. Uh, the framework and program plan identified high-level activities uh, as to 
from the framework of the why and what exactly is TISMO, why is it important, and the program plan, we looked at the, we got into the details of what are some specific things that we need to do from a statewide perspective to move us up the, the capability maturity model. The rest of the presentation here, I'll focus on the, the planning and the performance efforts we've done uh, through the development of the TISMO guidebooks as well as the regional operations plans that we've created. So when we started the, the idea of developing TISMO guidebooks, uh, we wanted to model them off of other areas of the department that were more mature than, than TISMO. So we looked at the, the design manual series of, of guidebooks. And when we first started talking about how to do this for TISMO, uh, the director of, of operations at the time had said, you know, it's similar to what happens if somebody in the district would decide that they want to build purple pavement. The answer is, well, you can't build purple pavement. And why, why is that the case? Well, because you have design manuals that, that tell you the A, Bs, and Cs of what is and isn't acceptable when it comes to designing a roadway. We were running into some similar things in TISMO where there were activities that we wanted to do uh, uniformly across the state. And if an engineering district wasn't necessarily in agreement with, we didn't have this type of, of manual series to uh, base the conversation on. So we set, our, we set out to develop something similar for TISMO where we looked at a planning design, maintenance, and operation manual. Uh, construction was already covered in other documentation, so we didn't need to, to work on that. Uh, the planning manual is, is, is complete. We've already revised it once. Our operations manual is nearly nearing completion, and the design's a little farther along than maintenance at this point. So in the, the, the planning guidebook, we focused on a, a number of things. We wanted to provide information for our districts and planning partners to understand how to look at congestion, uh, give folks tools so that we could identify, classify, and then figure out ways to properly mitigate it. And we also spent a lot of time working with our, our planning area in, in PennDOT to say, you know, we have certain things in TISMO, they have certain uh, guides that they do from the planning perspective, we need to understand where the where the two overlap. We want to become part of the overall planning process and not something that just sits on on the outside, which has largely been the struggle of ITS and, and TISMO over the years is uh, to be an afterthought on projects. We wanted to, to move up the level and start being more into the conversations. And the development of the regional operations plans were really a, a strong way to, to make that connection between TISMO and the planning functions. So when you look at our guidance in the, the uh, TISMO guidebook part one planning for how to develop a ROP, uh, we provided information and worked with the, the, the regions that I showed you on the first slide to help them identify what are their true congestion issues in the region, not just the anecdotal anecdotal thoughts as to where they feel that they have uh, challenges, but really looking at identifying the the issues, what's causing them, and what is it that we can really do about it by looking at the solutions in our, our TISMO toolbox. Uh, we've identified uh, 21 different strategies that uh, um, apply to various levels of various types of congestion, and then helping putting all this together to mitigate congestion in the end comes up with a, a regional operations plan. And by doing this, by combining the, the districts and the planning partners uh, together in the, in the discussions and all the other necessary stakeholders, we've had excellent buy-in for, for the ROPs. And now we've started to move from the day where we were just afterthoughts on projects to where TISMO projects are the projects that are being deployed. Uh, the other guidebook that is, is pretty well along is our operations guidebook, and we want this to, to help us manage, manage the policies and get that consistency across the state. So uh, the equivalent of the, the purple pavement for operations are doing things during uh, holiday periods or other strategies that we want to deploy for uh, TISMO. We want to make sure that we have the guidance put in place to ensure that there's something to point to when we say these are the types of things that we need done to improve traffic flow. And similar to what the regional operations plans do for deploying projects in the field, 
Uh, each of those regions will be developing a traffic operations plan to lay out how is it that we're going to manage traffic effectively in that area. So moving on from the planning side to the TISMO Performance Program. Uh, when we started our TISMO Performance Program, it, it took a little bit of time to, to get things up and running and get it moving. Uh, and once we really settled in on, okay, what are the issues that we need to address? Uh, we sat down with folks from across the different TISMO categories and said, don't, don't worry about what's available. Just tell us what your needs are. And then when we sat down to develop a program, the, the guidance was simple, that we wanted to develop something that the districts would be able to look at, understand, and be able to react to. That was what we felt a, a very important part of the performance program. Uh, where here's a few examples. These aren't things like saying that a particular road is congested. Something like that is a little too generic and not necessarily something a district would be able to take and do something specific with. But in the first uh, example here in the top left, uh, we identified things like crashes and travel time index to realize that one of our traffic management center uh, needed to expand their hours or move, move their hours to cover a, a more important part of the day. Uh, we also recognized that tools like INREX and Waze were better at capturing incidents than we were, uh, used that to develop a traffic alerts dashboard. Uh, and then as we started, st started developing our performance measures, we were getting more and more requests from the districts and planning partners asking for specific types of information they'd like to see. The one in the top right is an example of incident influence uh, spots, hot spots where we know that there are crashes occurring, but we haven't been as successful as, uh, to, as identifying them. And these types of this types of information was used to figure out where good camera locations would be, for example. So this is a look at, at some of the tools that I mentioned. Again, this, this tool was developed to help uh, the districts better understand what was happening when it comes to INREX and Waze information. We developed a, a, a traffic operations analytics tool that allows folks to dive into a whole gamut of information that we have avail available to really understand the performance of operations in their region. Uh, during the, the period of COVID, there was a lot of, uh, of questions as to how are the volumes being affected, what's happening with operations as a result. Uh, we worked with our planning area to develop uh, a tool that could be used to completely dive in in great detail to understand what volumes are doing at any point in time as, as we start trying to uh, get things back to normal. We also developed a congestion calendar to give folks a look at a glance at when congestion problems are likely to occur based on historical trends. And then the, one of the big ones that we had developed over the last year or two was to take the ideas of the federal congestion pie charts and create them so that we can see the actual congestion for Pennsylvania. And these were enlightening. We're learning things that we couldn't have learned by just using the, the typical uh, congestion pie chart. So we can now look at congestion at whatever level we want to cut it up here in Pennsylvania. So over the, the past year, uh, these programs have been successful and have been recognized from the National Operations Center of Excellence. Uh, we won two of the, the NOCO TISMO awards and then the uh, best TISMO project of, of the year. We were the overall winner for, for our performance program efforts. So that's what I have today. Uh, sorry it was rushed. I know we have a lot of information here to try to cover in a short amount of time, so thank you. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate it. And so before we go to q and I'm going to ask Adam Hops, who's the Interim Managing Director of NOCO, to say a few words about mainstreaming TISMO at NOCO. Adam. Thank you, Jocelyn, and, and thank you so much to Tracy and, and you and, and Pat Noyce uh, for presenting today along with the uh, fantastic presenters from, from straight DO, state DOTs. I think we heard the importance of uh, FHWA's efforts in, in collecting all this information around mainstreaming and, and understanding uh, how these various state um, leaders have have gone about um, mainstreaming their TISMO programs over the last um, five to ten years um, and, and collecting and those themes and presenting them here today is, is certainly of great value. Um, I, I think it's uh, it's um, no surprise that, that the um, states that spoke here today um, are also some of our biggest contributors into the NOCO case study library. 
Uh, we maintain that library of, of case studies uh, to capture uh, TISMO practices that are being deployed on the roadways and, and inside agencies. And, and uh, today was really a testament to mapping how um, leadership within those agencies directly contributes uh, to the benefits to the road users. Uh, from from what was presented on today to, to what's in that case study library, and then of course um, the the, uh, the the measures and the metrics presented on just now by by Doug and by the other states uh, certainly are a testament to that as well. Um, a couple about a year and a half ago now, um, uh, NOCO um, instituted a new strategic plan for 2021 to 2025. Um, the, our strategic advisory council um, and the technical advisory council and the leadership. Uh, that, that guides the center, uh, developed three new strategic goals and, and made mainstreaming TISMO um, one of those goals. Um, the ability to follow up on the work that FHWA has been doing uh, is going to be a centerpiece as, as we work to institute um, what that strategic goal looks like, uh, especially trying to focus on what we're good at at the center here, which is, you know, knowledge capture, knowledge management, and knowledge transfer, and demonstrating the value and the benefits of, of all the, the incredible work that was uh, was shown here today. So that's something uh, we're hoping, uh, Tracy mentioned in the beginning, that there's quite a few resources coming out from FHWA uh, here in the next six months. We're looking forward to, to assist with uh, with um, communicating um, out to the to the TISMO community um, all those those resources and that information and continuing to build on, on the uh, great work of FHWA in capturing uh, what's happening inside state DOT. So, Thank you again uh, to all the speakers uh, and to FHWA for organizing this webinar here today. And Jocelyn, look forward to uh, hearing some of the answers to the questions uh, that have started showing right, up in the chat box. All right. Thanks, Adam. Well, let's start back at the beginning here. Um, Ed, Edward Mark had a question, and I think this is probably for Tracy. Um, how is this project being coordinated with the development and deployment of uh, the Transportation Operations Manual, which is jointly sponsored by Ashto and Federal Highway. Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, the, yeah, the Transportation Operations Manual is a project that the Ashto Committee on Transportation System Operations uh, worked on uh, with the, uh, TRB and the NCHRP process. So there is a big effort going on with the uh, development of the manual right now uh, as being kind of a good standard uh, document to go for a, a uh, at least a high-level overview of all things TISMO. Uh, it may, it's not a how-to cookbook, uh, but it's a good introduction to a whole vast range of, of TISMO uh, topics and, and relevant connections to other areas. Um, Brent Kane has actually uh, been a lead on that panel uh, helping to develop that, so uh, I'll let him comment as well here. But I would say this project actually got started a little bit before the TOM project got started, development of that manual. And I would say this is yeah, that the TOM manual um, uh, gets into a lot of, of different aspects of TISMO. This project was looking specifically at mainstreaming and how um, having TISMO more integrated into agencies might help a lot of TISMO efforts get broader support and more traction in agencies. So I would say this they're complementary in that sense because there's a little bit of that in the TOM, but not that's not a focus of the TOM. The TOM is, you know, covers a range of TISMO strategies. It does cover the capability maturity model and some of those aspects uh, in there. And so I think it's somewhat complementary, and these products here could um, be used by uh, those who who use the TOM to, to help further TISMO in their agencies. I don't know, Brent, if you want to add some something to the – response there. Yeah, no, Tracy, I, you, you hit it quite well, and, and it's it's basically, it's it's in process, it's being reviewed. Uh, like like Tracy noted, uh, CTSO, the Committee on Transportation Systems and Operations, uh, it's being reviewed by the members in there, and uh, we're looking to have that, essentially, it's, it's a very solid, sound draft right now, and as Tracy noted, this this document, it's a mile wide and a mile deep. It covers everything TISMO. It's not a document that you're going to read from front to cover. It's going to be more of a resource document for, for not just state DOTs, but for all uh, NCOs, locals, whatever it may be, uh, because it does touch everything TISMO. So it's going to be an excellent resource. It's going to be a fluid resource as well, too. But we're looking to get that 
as part of that technical service program, just like what NOCO is now, um, as well as the regional operation, uh, regional operation leadership forum, having those three pillars uh, moving forward. So look to see that um, or, uh, probably summer of next year. Uh, but it's going to be an excellent resource for anybody uh, that even wants to understand what TISMO is and, and suits the uh, bolt. So thank you. All right, great. Thank you. And then we had one other question here. Um, many agencies already do activities that are TISMO-oriented, even though they're not yet formally called TISMO. Um, this person was wondering if there's a CMM model that can be applied first before mainstreaming TISMO, and this may be for Tracy as well. Well, I'll start it off here, but I know all, uh, all my my uh, colleagues here on in the webinar uh, have been uh, involved with CMM. I posted mm -hmm. a link in the chat to the AASHTO CMM uh, um, tool and guidance. That's an online version of the tool, and that looks at uh, TISMO capabilities across six key areas. Um, which are business processes, systems and technology, uh, performance measures, organization and staffing, uh, culture and collaboration. And so those are a lot of good foundational pieces to helping uh, to mainstream TISMO and uh, many agencies have found it helpful to get people in the room and to go through that. Uh, you can do the online tool uh, or you can you know, get together in a room and discuss collaboratively with, with the agency and even external partners how well you think you're doing in each of those areas. And if you've got some real weak points in any of those six dimensions, it's, um, I, I would venture to say it's probably going to have an effect on your ability to mainstream TISMO, but um, I, I will let my colleagues uh, comment on that if they, would, if they uh, want to, because I know you're all experienced with the CMM. This is Doug from Ted. I, I don't think whether you call it TISMO or you call it something else really has any bearing on the effect, effectiveness of the CMM. The CMM will help you look at your program, whatever you're calling it, whether you're calling it traffic operations, operations, or TISMO, to let you know how effective it is today. So the key for that is really getting the stakeholders in the room so it's a, a less biased, only DOT based. Uh, capability maturity, but I think if you get the stakeholders in the room and have the conversation uh, about what it is you're doing, you'll figure out how you're doing from a CMM without having a formal program. Great, great. All right, and then we also had a question, and I think Brent, you answered this somewhat in chat here, but it may be something that you want to expand on, on ADOT uh, relationship between t the TISMO unit that you lead and then planning and programming, um, both within ADOT but then also with MPOs and how you are able to, um, I guess, have that close relationship with your MPOs. It sounds like not everyone has that uh, state DOT and MPO connection um, when it comes to TISMO planning. So, yeah, uh, no, and thank you for that. Uh, great question. And, you know, since we're – you know, with TISBO, essentially it's operations, it's on the back end, but obviously it's extremely important to be looking at the front end, on the planning end, and how do we incorporate uh, that back end? And typically, you know, we look at just let's widen the road, let's let's do other kind of measures without really looking at the, the downstream. And part of that is really working closely with, you know, with our planning division here at Arizona DOT on – getting out in front, having that dialogue, working with the districts as well, too, on, on the, the challenges. But always have a set of eyes, as, you know, we need to have a, a broader look at how do we are, how we're addressing that, that problem or problem. And I think that's been extremely beneficial to have that, uh, that liaison, that contact on the planning side. It's extremely important. Uh, working with the NPOs as well, too, in the MAG region, we're sunsetting the, uh, the RTP, the Regional Transportation Plan, in a couple of years. And it's been focused essentially on constructing new infrastructure. Now they're looking at the next generation, the RTP, and it's going to be more focused on maintenance and operation. And I see operation heavy on TISMO. So it's actually a very exciting time 
in the Phoenix area, it's like we're going to be focusing on technology, and they're looking at putting a lot of money in the Phoenix region on TISMO-specific uh, ideals. So it's something that we work closely with the, with the MTOs on as far as on the planning side to get up front. Um, so hopefully that helps address, uh, answer your question. Yeah, thanks. And I also want to direct that to Sabrat if you are not on listen-only mode. I think <laughs> I think your mic should be good. Um, but yeah, I know that you know previously your position was in the office of planning and you were doing work on Tismo from the office of planning. How now has that evolved such that um, the Tismo, the new Tismo unit in its new organizational structure is working with planning at Maryland DOT? And you may be on mute. Oh. Okay. Um, would any of the other um, speakers like to talk about that, about how you work with the Office of Planning and, and your MPOs on TISMO? So this is Doug from Bad Not Again. It's very important, I think, because at the end of the day, if we're going to try to get TISMO integrated in, we got to get it through the planning process. If you don't want to just always be uh, an add-on to a project, you got to engage them, uh, the planning side, the planning partners, get their buy-in and feedback and sell them on why this is, why the TISMO is important and why they should consider it. Because at the end of the day, they're juggling priorities with uh, structurally deficient bridges and, and pavements with, with don't always have enough funding. So it's a, a selling process and it's coordinating it with the planning partners, I think, is absolutely critical to success. Okay, great. Thanks. And then a question for just over the next couple minutes here that we have. Why do you think your agency has made progress in mainstreaming TISMO? And Maybe we'll open that up to Kim first, if you'd like to take a take a stab at that, and then we can go through others. Yeah, I think uh, definitely, like I mentioned, that having the, the director so in tune with TISMO is a big help uh, to, to, to get it started. But then I also think, that, like with our work zone efforts, getting it in the hands of the people that know it and enabling them has been a big factor. Uh, the other one is just seeing budgets and the, the need for you know, the, the old way of adding infrastructure just isn't sustainable, so that's kind of forced our hand to look at what, what are we going to do for these areas where we have operation concerns. Great, great. And um, Doug, do you want to go back to that one? Unless it brought your back. All right, Doug. Doctor, can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can. Hi, Sabrat. Oh, uh, sorry about that. No, I just put our message on the chat pod here talking about our planning processes and there are multiple projects that go through the planning process that are TISMO projects uh, in scope. And more importantly, we brought in a new suite of system preservation projects that were traditional geometric improvements at a district level. Those projects also have TISMO components as we, um, these, these could be localized hard solder running, this could be localized uh, signal retiming and integrated freeway arterial operations. So we are bringing some of those strategies uh, at a district planning level, at a headquarters planning level, and coordinating that with the TISMO program. Great, great, wonderful. And Doug, back to you. In terms of why do you think PennDOT has made progress in mainstreaming TISMO? So I think largely it was champion driven in the beginning, which I don't feel is very uncommon for people to, as they start pushing a TISMO program. The engineering districts that were successful had a champion. I pushed it from our side. We really marketed it to the folks that, that needed to be involved. We talked to leadership about it. So I mean, it's a grassroots to get this thing started. The ultimate goal, if you're going to be successful and move up the capability maturity model, is you've got to get get this integrated in and doing things like the guidebook series and developing performance measures, those th things along the way will help us move up to where the champion driven becomes less important and it becomes part of how we do business. Yeah, excellent. 
All right. And Brent, a slightly different question for you. So as you look forward at ADOT over the next five years, what do you think the future of TISMO looks like there? Oh, that's, that's a very good question. Um, I think it's, it's something that TISMO, I think, is, it's going to be, it's baked into ADOT. No question. It's, it's integrated. It's at executive, uh, level, uh, incorporation. I don't see that changing, even changing in government because like through NOCO, we have a lot of, um, uh, efforts to really showcase the benefits behind TISMO. And simply just looking at benefit costs. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that we have done and we continue to do to really, and we've got a lot of work ahead of us as well too, uh, to really showcase and prove the benefits of, of TISMO. And I think it's exciting now with the new technologies that are coming that are, and it's not linear, it's exponential. And I think TISMO is, is a major, um, or a major uh, component within, you know, the DOT that can that can manage and leverage that moving it forward with technology. Thank you. Great. Wonderful. And a, and a good note to end on here. Um, it looks like we have run out of time. So much to talk about, but appreciate all of your questions and your presentations. And I'm going to turn it over to Tracy Scrippa to close us out. Tracy. Thank you, Jocelyn, and I just want to thank everyone for joining us today for the webinar. I want to thank our wonderful speaker panel uh, that brought a lot of great insights from their practical experience at really uh, mainstreaming and integrating TISMO and, and just a lot of uh, um, successes they've had and some bumps along the road, but a lot of successes in uh, moving forward uh, in the TISMO area. So thank you for sharing those practices. and. Uh, uh, thank you for the National Operations Center of Excellence for allowing us to partner on this webinar. Everyone have a great day. Thank you all.